seen thousands of comments of people basically telling me that I have to train the animals in release in order to send them into combat. I know that. Uh, the only thing that I wanted to do first, and the thing I speculated on last episode, is build the animal control beacon. Because I, I thought last episode that maybe if we had that, it would allow us to draft them. But then I said, oh, that might be a little bit overpowered. But it turns out that's exactly what it does, according to uh, one of you guys on Discord. So I'm going to build one of those, which I think is under genetics. Yeah, here we go. Animal control hub. So this will, in theory, allow me to guide the animals as drafted characters. I don't know if we still need to train them in release or whether or not. I didn't want to do it just in case we didn't actually need it, you know, because that's a lot of time wasted training every single animal and keeping their training up in release all the time. So let's just see if this will allow us to control them by itself. If not, then, you know, no harm lost there. Um, no harm lost. Nothing lost. No harm, no foul. Whatever the expression is. Donuts. Uh... Donuts, I need you to... Oh, someone's moving components over. Oh, we went... There we go. Sedini's on it. Boom. All right. Animal control hub. Now, let's go to one of our animals. Hey, look at this. My control creature. It, it does exactly what we thought it would do. This, this, is what I, this is what I thought it would do. I now basically have uh, Bonaro drafted here and can just drive it around the map manually. Release insect clouds. Causes the creature to release insect clouds, damaging every pawn that isn't an insect hybrid. We've got Mecha Blast. Vents exhaust into the tiles surrounding the mechanoid hybrid, burning anything close to it. Oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Um, check the animal's health tab to see how often it can... Uh, so recently vented exhaust gas is recovering. I see. Let's try the insect cloud one. Oh. That's really gross, actually. And what does that do? Um, does that hurt it at all? No, it doesn't. It just gives it uh, sort of a red smoke when it's done releasing the insect clouds. I see. So I, I'm going to assume that doesn't damage it in any way. It doesn't seem to have done anything there. Its health seems fairly normal. Age minus nine hours. <laughs> Classic. I think we, I think this may fuck up quite monumentally when we uh, when we use the age drugs as well. But we'll wait and see how that works. Right, I'm going to stop mind controlling him for a while. That's interesting. So that's that's actually really really good. So now obviously we can uh, say double click on our spiders here. Mind control them. I assume yeah we can move them as a unit. So look at that. Okay, that's pretty OP. I like that. But. Apparently, the downside to this is to use them, say, say if we were going to send them out into an enemy base, we need to build an animal control hub on every map that we want to control them on. So there will be certain enemy bases when we send these boys into attack. We might actually just want to train them in the release anyway, so that although we won't have control over them, they still are useful in combat. Other thing we can do is have them ridden on by, say, like, I know, Igor robot clones. So an, an eagle clone that we've made fully robotic or an eagle clone that we've implanted with some of the animal stuff. Um, we could have those... Riding them instead, so that um, so that basically they can direct it without needing to, you know, build the control center or train them in release or something like that. Anyway, I'll decide whatever sounds coolest at the time. So, how are we doing with Anton's son? 59% grown. That's inspiring me with confidence, seeing as I haven't really been doing anything with it at all. Unlike when we tried to clone Igor, I haven't been manually sending people over to keep it maintained or anything like that. It's just been going at its own sort of pace there, which is pretty great to see. What genetic materials do we have then? Let's see what we've got kicking around right now. Um, we've got some bears. I'd like to clone the... Okay, we've got plenty of insect, plenty of wolf, um, rodent. We've got muffalo. I need to sort this freezer out. I really need to change this around so that the genetic engineering area is actually next to the freezer. What I might do is something something along the lines of this. My god, the hiccups have already started. It's unbelievable. Um, why don't we do it like this? No, that's that's absolutely the opposite of what I wanted to happen. Um, expand this zone over here. Uh, then we'll just go ahead and copy... Cop... Cop... Copy... Copy... Copy this one. There we go. <laughs> Man, that took fucking ages. Paste on this one. And then delete this. And then this room can just be for genetic engineering, that type of thing. Um, and then this can be obviously the storage area for all of the, uh, genetics and stuff. Now we need all of this ha hauled urgently before we actually build this wall, otherwise it'll all start to deteriorate. So let's get all of this stuff hauled into there immediately, before hopefully they start building the wall. Now we could break this back and this down as well. Do I want to break them down into components, or do I want to break them down into, um, their sort of genetic extraction stuff? Honestly, I might as well just break them down into their genetics because we're not really using the mechanoid control mod. As cool as it might be, it's an entirely uh, other mod to learn. And I'm kind of comfortable with what we've got lying around right now. So this is just going to get rid of some of their bodies here just because it's uh, taking up a shit ton of room. We didn't have any... Um, uh, well, we didn't have many active components left. We've only got eight now. So we'll try and get like ten of those. And then I might save a couple of bodies just to disassemble, I guess, for the... Um, what is it they drop? Like mechanoid data and things like that, just so we've got some kicking around. Now that was at the uh, assembly table, wasn't it? The disassembly table. Let's go ahead and uh, mechanoid. Right, there we go. And then do that forever, and I'll just suspend it when we want to stop it. Um, again, I should probably do that forever and just suspend it as well when we're done with it. Right, so disassemble mechanoid. Um, need material. 
Excuse me? Oh, has it got a radius to it, maybe? Um, let's take a look. These, well, I shouldn't have, because I've just put the... Yeah, what? Oh, right, maybe they don't count as being a storage, because we haven't got the stockpile over the entire thing. Oh my god, this is, this is fucking awful. Like, building stockpiles on these, because the game will default to putting boxes around these, because they count as objects, rather than floors, which obviously don't have that effect. It's almost impossible to pick a storage zone in that area. Right, let's try that, then. Um, oh, we can't get to it, because the... Oh, shit. Frozen? How is it frozen? Holy shit, is the base really that cold? Wow, it is. The hospital's minus eight degrees. I never know I never noticed that before. That's absolutely insane. Okay, well, that's both a good thing and goddamn awful at the same time. Um, let's, let's build a couple of auto doors here and just get this all connected up. Put the genetic engineering stuff over here, because that way it's also kind of close to the clone vats as well, right? We've got everything sort of nicely centralized. I like this area being a lab area, but this is more like um production and mechanics, that type of thing, for like um robotics components, that type of thing, assembly, rather than I suppose genetics and, and true lab work. So what I'm trying to do here is rearrange our stockpiles a little bit because we've still got so many goddamn organs, even though we are butchering them to turn them into nutrient solution to obviously fill up our cloning vats. It is kind of a pain in the ass that we've got this many. Like, it's, it's a ridiculous amount of organs. 65 eyeballs, uh, 20 noses, 36 legs. Like, it's taking up so much storage space. Now, to my knowledge, these actually don't need to be refrigerated because they're sort of in these little, um, I don't know, polystyrene containers, which apparently keeps organs fresh. Um, we're going to move those over here instead. Let me just double check. Yeah, no, they don't. And plus, this room is minus 8 degrees anyway. Jesus, this base is so cold. It's only minus 15 outside. We're just not very insulated, I guess. Should probably build a couple of freezers in here just because it's going to slow them down coming in and out. Right. Now, that should free up some storage space for the actual main sort of... Oh, there we go. That looks just looking so much nicer. Right, let's reinstall this one into... We already got one up there. Oh, we do. Right, so we can actually reinstall that one, I guess, over here. Because this area won't be affected by stockpile beacons. Um, just double check here. No, it's not. Okay, that, that's pretty great. So we want to get the last of these things also uh, covered with a beacon there. Should also shrink the zone a little bit so these ones are covered. Now, we've got the anti-logic robotics matrix. Why can we not build the Omnibot? What did we need for that? 75 plastic, one anti-logic. So you're telling me we don't have 75 plastic kicking around? Plastic. No, we've clearly got enough. It's just no one's building it. Tier 5 under... Skill required 20. Oh. Does anyone... Uh, surely someone's got 20. Cra yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's only Grantly Grimble, though. And Grantly Grimble's been busy with other things. Um, There we go. All right, let's build this Omnibot and see what the hell it does. How long is it, How much work does it take? Apparently not very much, which is kind of surprising, seeing as it's an Omnibot that uses anti-logic, whatever the hell that is. All right, there it is. Um, I suppose we'll set it up in this room. Basically, somewhere that's kind of centralized to the whole base. Activate? Whoa. Uh, holy shit, that thing's fast. Um, r robots? Robots? Omnibot. Um, wait, wait, robots? Omnibot. Where are you? Holy shit, hang on, let's turn the speed down a little bit. Man, that thing is quick. What does it do? Building... Oh, it can do, like, absolutely everything then, I assume. It certainly looks like it can. Um, it's now... So this will give us a good idea, indication for the skills that it's got. Let's take a look here. Tier 5 godlike unit capable of almost anything. NP equals P. Sure. Um, it's got... Wait, it's got melee DPS and it's got sh shooting accuracy, aiming time. So it can actually fire as well. Oh, it doesn't have a range DPS, so I assume it doesn't have that at all. Very weird. Um, can we see like it's... Time is a colonist, one hour. It's got no kills, unsurprisingly. So we can actually keep a, a close eye on what it actually can do in the records tab here, but I'm just going to sort of watch it for a second. Minimal com comfortable temperatures, minus 110 up to plus 110 degrees. That's that's Celsius as well, so that's pretty goddamn hot. Um, filth rate, 0 0.75, me IRL. All right, um, well... Like I was saying, one of the best ways we can measure how good its skills are in a particular area is seeing what type of quality bed we get out of this. Now, seeing as it's defaulted to quality builder, current quality awful. What does that mean? Current quality awful. It's got quality builder turned on, which means only the best builder will build it, to my knowledge. Um, and our best builder has 20 construction. So what you're telling me is the robot has 20 construction. Well, they built an excellent bed, so I can only assume that that probably is the case. Oh shit, this thing seems massively overpowered. Oh, uh, what's new? I mean, <laughs> look at the base. Well, I mean, uh, why do anything different, eh? Why, why break the habit of a lifetime? Weird. Okay, so let's try and warm up this base a little bit. I didn't realize quite how freezing cold it was. Um, literally freezing cold. Right, let's put a couple of heaters in this room. This is a freezer, so that one definitely doesn't need to be warmed up. I assume this room then is... Oh, 20 degrees. How is that? Oh, there's a heater in there. Right, fair enough. Um, this room is 20 degrees. The stockpile is... Oh, I'm looking at the fucking... 
clock, aren't I? Like a fool. Um, it is 21 degrees, though. I reckon that's fine. Um, nuclear reactor room, 7 degrees. Famously, nuclear reactors do run very cold, so that's not much of a surprise. Um, minus 5 in the stockpile. A couple wouldn't hurt, but to actually heat this room up is going to take a hell of a lot of power. Um... I'm going to build a couple just to bring the average temperature up a little bit. They're only going to be in there for a short amount of time, just bringing it and taking out resources. So it won't matter too much. This whole area, I want to move down to here. Um, I don't know whether we've got enough room for all of these machines, though. They are quite large, aren't they? What the fuck are these? Oh, butcher tables, right, for the organs. Uh, we should probably build those closer to the door, I guess. Um, similarly, we'll do it on the other side as well. Uh, there we go. That's, that's a little bit better there. I'll try and fit all the machines in over here so that we can actually keep the genetics going as efficiently as possible. Alright, there we go. So that's looking a little bit better, a little bit more centralized there. I've, I've removed the door to the nuclear reactor because we need another storage area just for the incubators. So this room can have the incubators in because if we put incubators in the freezer, they will just freeze, obviously. Um, so to get to the nuclear reactor, you do have to go through the room where all of the insects are being crossbred. I feel like that's a nice deterrent for anybody trying to uh, trying to raid the base there. So that Omnibot is pretty goddamn broken, it turns out. It will just do basically everything incredibly quickly. Uh, so I'm not going to be building any of those anytime soon, let's put it that way. Right, okay. So the colony's looking pretty good. What's the next step then? I need to build a fusion reactor for the colony because I feel like, I mean, A, that would be kind of cool. But um, also, we're kind of running out of power. We've got a lot of demand for stuff, but we're not really fulfilling it. Um, and this room that was obviously the, the, the previous room for the incubation, it's going to work out really, really well for it because it's just a coincidence that it happens to be the right size for the reactor there. Um, how do I want to do this then? So, we could have three blocks on either side. But let's just do it like that. That looks pretty nice, I think. Um, might want to line it with something a bit more appropriate than granite, seeing as it is a, a plasma fusion reactor. But hey, we'll start work on that. Now, the only downside to that is to, like I said last episode, to actually produce the things we need to build the reactor. We need a matter fabricator first and foremost, which is pretty absurd. Uh, but they use something like 11,000 watts of power. So, it's, it's kind of ridiculous how expensive these things are. Now, I'm kind of wanting to get rid of a couple of the AI manufacturing plants just because, you know, we don't need them anymore. We're not using that much AI stuff. Um, this power cable was for an old, um, the old conveyor belt system I was trying to get to work that gave up on in the end. Right. Matter fabricator. We'll put that one, put it there, I suppose. It doesn't really matter too much. I don't, I don't, I don't really care. It's a, it's a matter fabricator. Honestly, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. <laughs> Good one. Right. Um, so what are we actually stuck at right now? So we need 320 titanium, which we should more than have enough of that, right? Um... Or not, I guess. Uh, materials. We actually have no titanium. Right, okay. Understandable. Have a great day. Oh, man. We're, we're stuck on the gold because of the gold bedrooms. I see. Right, so now we're going to be past the gold and then we can actually start working on the titanium. I won't build any more bedrooms until we've dealt with... Oh, I could just move it down the list, couldn't I? Let's put gold just above silver because the hotel isn't as big a priority as a plasma fusion reactor. I feel like that should be fairly self-evident from the name. Right, so those boys are going to bring over the gold and the titanium there. There we go. Now we've already started on it. Titanium is done. So we've got 11 magnetic coils, and these are the expensive ones. These things are pretty absurd. Um, we do have an excess of 19,000 watts of power there, so we can turn these things back on as well. Right, so magnetic coils are an absolute pain in the ass to make. They require 10 computer components, 20 titanium. Obviously, titanium we've got an abundance of. I don't need to worry about that too much. To assemble computer components, we need 10 gold and 20 silicon. Um, silicon, in turn, requires stone blocks to be refined at an electrolyzer, and stone blocks require actual stone blocks to obviously be cut at a uh, block cutting table, which we only have one of. So, um, what I'm thinking then, let's get rid of the AI stuff, because that's sort of, we've, that's old, we've done that, it's kind of a bit boring. Right, we'll get rid of those, we will instead... Turn this area into a beta poly production area. It sounds a little bit ridiculous, but it's fairly straightforward. Um, we've got to start with a couple of stone cutting tables, and we go from there. Plus, it, you know, stone cutting means we're never going to have another, another idle colonist. Because stone cutting is something everybody can do no matter what, right? So, we get a couple of, um, I guess, steel ones, just so it looks a little bit nicer than crappy plastic ones. Now, similar to this room, we are going to want to put these workbenches down too. Um, I'm going to put them basically as centralized as possible. Um, we'll get rid of these, because we're not using those anymore for anything productive. And then we'll put this one... Oh, shit, I'm reinstalling them. What a fool. Right, okay, let's try that again. Build copy, genius. Right, so put that one there. Build a copy of that one. And then we need the red one as well. Right, okay. So basically, we want all the workbenches nearby. I don't know if it will affect these. No, I don't think it does. I think they're well within range, aren't they? 
Yeah, they are. Okay, so it doesn't affect the mod buildings or the mod production areas, but it will affect, obviously, our stone cutters table, things like that. So let's turn this area. Like I said, beta poly production. I'm going to go for four wooden stone cuts tables. I might even go for four electrolyzers, two robotic assemblers, and then one matter fabricator because that's sort of the equivalent input to output we're going to get. One magnetic coil obviously takes up a shit ton of components there. What is it? Ten computer components. Each one of those take 20 silicon. Um, 20 silicon requires how many blocks exactly? Um, 35 stone blocks. Oh shit. So this is going to be... We should probably build a couple more of these. Man, I might need to go for like six stone cutter tables, three electrolyzers, two of these, and then obviously one matter fabricator as well. This is going to be expensive. This is going to be incredibly expensive. Now, not only that, the matter fabricator also requires computer components. Um, this is where somebody who's better at maths or at least more dedicated to doing the maths than me would shine. Because you can work out exactly what you need to get a really efficient production line here. I'm just going to build more than we need because we've got the resources to do it. And I don't want people to be, you know, I don't want people to be idle or anything like that. Right, so where is it? Stonecutter's table is with my eyes made of steel these days, which is why I couldn't see it. Um, again, pack them in as closely as we can to the area. So we do something like that. I'm going to cancel this for now and we'll put it somewhere a bit better in the future. Alright, so we've got four stone cutters tables. And then, it's a fucking Omnibot. It's so broken. It's just actually ridiculously overpowered. Um, I mean, like I said, it's no real change because of everything we've got going on here. But that is like a little bit too strong. Seeing as that's kind of a standalone, very, very cheap and easy mod. It's not these the, the ridiculous brain things which required a shit ton of research and a shit ton of resources. Like, this was just a load of research time. It's essentially free cost. Just time you're investing in it at that stage. Um, yeah, a little bit broken, I think. Right, so we want, uh, on top of that, so we've got our stone cutters tables. We want a couple of electrolyzers, which apparently are also unaffected by these. So, I essentially have wasted a lot of room here. Um, so we get a couple of these things. Now, I probably want, like I said, about four of them. And again, I'm going to be a bit more space conscious. Normally, I'm thinking of aesthetic. These days, we can't afford aesthetic. We're going nuclear. Right, um, we could fit a couple in there. Oh, man, it's a real shame that this room is, uh... Bit of a weird size, eh? We could actually fit them if I... Yeah, okay, so we can do that. So we can still access that area if we do that as well. We could pack them in all like that. The issue is they obviously can't get into the room at that stage. What if we do... Oh, because that's blocking the interaction spot. All right, let's just do it like that then. It's not ideal, but it's better than nothing. Like I said, I want as many as we can fit in at this stage. And we'll build a couple of these. Um, so this is going to make... A... Oh, actually, we probably only want one. No, no, no. We need the computer components as well. Okay, kind of a pain in the ass there, but we will do that too. So we can go one there and one... Yeah, so I'll cancel this one and build another one sort of like this. Um, that way they can obviously still get to the room fairly easy. And then we could even put another electrolyzer if we need it. Or an another stone cut stable if we're really struggling for the actual input. Alright, so I've squished the room in a little bit more. Trying to downside as much as possible to fit as in as much around these cabinets as we could beforehand. I've set all of these to make any stone blocks forever. I built a couple of shelves as well, which are the highest priority stone storage we've got, or at least they would be if I set them up right. I think I did it with this one anyway. Um, yeah. So, setting that to critical priority means they'll prefer those to the stockpiles, unless we've got overflow, at which point they will put them back in the stockpiles. I've also done the same with, uh, silicon and computer components as well. So when they're producing the silicon from here, they're leaving it on these shelves, and then they can be grabbed from these shells straight and turn into compu computer components at this bench here. Now, the only way to get computer, you can see this takes computer components to build it, and we don't have any yet. So, the way you do it without having a robotics assembler is you have to search regular components at uh, the machining table. Now, the issue is this is 10 components will output one computer, it says their products, uh, se oh, sorry, seven components and one computer component output. So, you need 10 minimum, even though you're only spe technically converting three into um, one component. It's a weird system, but that's just how you get components early on in the game. So I set them to do that basically 25 more times because, you know, we just need a shit ton of them. And I don't really mind wasting a few here and there until we can get this set up properly. Um, now, I imagine we probably run out of regular components, haven't we? We've got 44 out of 50. Why are they not doing that first then? Um, probably, oh, there we go. Sadini's doing it now. That explains it. So he's doing that. Can he get some computer components out of that? Which in turn will be put on these shelves or more importantly, hauled to here because obviously that has a requirement for it. And then over time, this is actually working out much better than I thought already. See, Granite Grimmel there is just churning out a shit ton of silicon over and over. People are bringing more blocks over because they have nothing better to do. Now, I imagine stone cutting is quite low on the list. Yeah, it is for everybody. So, oh. Hey, this is what we needed. Hang on. So, one of you said, next time you kill a... Th oh, my God, there's three. Next time you kill a thrombo, clone it beforehand. So, that way we've got infinite thrombo genetics. That's a great idea. So, or at least take its genome so that we can clone it in the future if we need more genetics. So, Donitz, wait. Now's the time to test it out, eh? Now, let's see how well this works. Right, so we go to the animal. Let's find the... T let's go to T800 here. Mind control. Let's go. 
We're going to test out Mega Spider versus Thrombo. I don't know what the hell that thing is, but I kind of want to kill it. Um, cannot order characters you do not control. What do you mean? Oh, do we need to... This, incapable of Violent? Um, bamboozled? Do I have to train it in... Uh, do we have to train it in release first, then? I guess so. Oh, I've been bamboozled after all this time. You know what? Let's test that out. I need, I need to give that a go before I can uh, before I can guarantee that's how that works. Can we just have him attack it anyway? Let's send him out here and just mecha blast it, and then it'll attack him, and then hopefully it will defend itself. At least, at least fingers crossed that's how it'll work. Mecha blast. Oh, excuse me. Mecha. Oh, okay. Hang on. Um, hey, stand still. Right. Uh, let's turn the speed down a little bit. Otherwise, I'm gonna be. Get him. Yeah. Fuck him up. That did nothing. <laughs> all right, you know what? I feel like I'm, I need to train in the release first still, even after all this time. Right, Donitz, get up here. Um, I need you to kill some Thrombo for me. He was idle anyway, so he's got nothing better to do. All right, my God, he moves so fast, even on speed two. Kill them all. Oh, God. I don't like that being red. So red means they're all going to attack us. Um, bring it, you Thrombo shit. Yes, kill them all. Nice, there's one down. T uh, you might want to run away a bit. There we go. So, so, when it pops up red, it means they're all hostile. Because um, I know there are some people who haven't played much room or do watch these videos. Right, okay. Perfect. And if you can tell the last one as well. We don't particularly want them to burn to death. But it doesn't really matter too much. As long as they're disabled and on the ground, so this guy's not going to get gored. I think even a Thrombo could fuck up Donut. These things have, have a ridiculous melee attack. Right, if we go to those and then click finish off, they should, some colonists should come up and uh, immediately kill them and drag them over to base. There we go. Hey, there we go. Worked perfectly, right? Um, I like that Mason came over, killed that one, and just left it on the floor. Thanks for that. All right, let's talk about Hotel Donuts a second. Then um, let's reconnect that to an actual power source. These bedrooms are really nice. Um, they could do with some cleaning there. So again, I, I want to uh, run these hotels with just robots. I think that'd be kind of cool. So let's pick the actual. Oh, let's pick the internal room layout. I should do. Um, let's grab just this stuff. Bedroom one. That does fit. It's kind of annoying, but it does fit. Right, there we go. Um, then that one can go there. And then we'll just lay them all out the same way. I'm not going to, like, you know, rotate it so it's all oriented the same way or anything like that. That's, that's crazy talk. We might have to... Oh, you know what? These ones I need to rotate around, though, don't I? Otherwise, the bed would be locking the door. Right. Um, whoa! I've been playing The Sims. Just fuck me with my rotation. Right, there we go. Let's try that one instead. Um, what is that there? Is that like a wardrobe or something? I assume so. Right, so we can... Oh, th those actually do line up pretty well. Um, again, I will have to get rid of the, um, whatever that is there, the dresser, so they can actually get in. But that's, that's a minor setback. Alright, that's gonna look pretty damn good. And then we can allow some guests in as well. I'll wait until we've got at least six or so beds before we actually open the hotel to guests. Uh, I kinda wanna do my sushi bout as well. I think that'd be kinda fun. Uh, let's take a look at the conveyor bouts here. So we can... How do we do it? So I think we just have a freezer with a stop on it and just have the food going around in a big... Because if we set it to pull, like, one every 12 hours or so, I think it'll also stop the food going off because it'll be constantly in rotation. It will eventually rot, but it'll take so long that I don't think we'll even notice, to be honest with you. Now, we can also make sushi. Um, there is a river nearby, so maybe we could get some robots. Can we set their radio? Oh, we can set their allowed areas. We could have Omnibots fishing, hauling it back, cooking for us, and serving it to the customers. And if we set them to just go within this particular area, they won't have a, help, help out with the regular base stuff. They'll just be for the hotel. That's a good, that's a good idea. I like this. So we need another 37 magnetic coils. It's going to be incredibly expensive. So that's 10 computer components per... Oh, man. That's going to be so expensive. Right, so do until we have uh, 37... Wait, was it 37 or was it 35? Um, yeah, it's 37, right? That's fine. And then we probably want to build another one of these just churning out... Just purely dedicated to computer components, or at least um, reversing the work order in it. So computer components come above magnetic coils, the opposite to this one. So how many computer components are we going to want in that case? So it's 10 per magnetic coil. So we're going to need 370, seriously? Because we need 30, yeah, we're going to need 370. Jesus, good lord. Okay, so do until we have, should we just do it X times? Because nothing else is producing computer components right now. So we just do that 370 times. Jeez, wait, no, do until we have it? But the issue is they're immediately going to use it up, so I just want to do it at X amount of time so that we're not churning out way more than we need. Because these things are kind of expensive and kind of a waste of time otherwise. So, 370 computer components, um, 20 silicon per, and then 10 gold as well. So, gold is the other thing we need for 
this area. Now, the issue is that the gold is all going to be churned out onto the hotel right now. So, so the nuclear reactor is kind of falling by the wayside until the hotel set up. But I think, I think getting some guests over here would be kind of nice. Because um, it will, will help improve relations, reduce some raids down a little bit. Uh, it's a tactical play because obviously our, our raids... Let me, let me check the wealth tab. I hate... This is not the wealth tab. I hate to check the wealth tab because it's going to make me cry. Uh, what are we up to now? Oh, you know what? We're not nearly at our peak. We had a lot, lot worse when we were when we were churning out all that titanium stuff. It's surprisingly well. So it's killing off all those death bots worked out in our favor, eh? So I'm thinking rather than building the omnibots, which are hideously OP, why don't we build some crafting bots just to help, you know, stone cut, things like that? Because it counts... I wonder if that, where it says there, requires skill crafting 20. Whether or not... Oh, no, no. It is, it is just the same for everything, eh? Okay, so it, you do actually need 20 crafting to make one of those. Um, I don't think we need to go that extreme, seeing as we just want them to really stone cut and make some silicon, which I think is very unskilled. Um, 16 crafting for that one. That's okay. Make some crafting bots that make crafting bots. We can make a crafting bot and then churn out more crafting bots with it, but this is getting very sky now all of a sudden. Um, let, let's make some tier 4, see what they're capable of. So, do until we have, we'll just make one for now. So, what do the tier 4 ones need? They need a robotic matrix advance, and this is going to probably take more gold and everything. Um... Advanced Robotic Matrix takes 20 Robotic Components, of course it does. Uh, 4 Advanced Components, 50 Gold. That's not too expensive, I guess. Right. So, can we have someone working on that? Oh my god, we need someone with 16 skill, don't we? I think that's only Grantly Grimble. God damn it. Okay. So, we're going to have to distract him from his other jobs as well. Why is he hauling gold rather than doing anything else? Excuse me? Grimble? Why are you doing that? Rather than crafting. Uh, are we out of... Are all the jobs finished? Oh, they are. Oh, okay, fair enough then. I was. Uh, wait, and why can't we do. Okay, that's reserved by Tay. That's reserved by Nick. That one's, that one's fine. So we could be stone cutting instead. I might have to increase the stone cutters' jobs then. So they're actually. Oh man, did I not put jobs on any of these other electrolyzers? That might explain a lot. <sighs> Unbelievable. Well, that took no time at all. I turned my back and they basically already finished it. Sweet. Okay, so let's see if this robot is capable of. Sorry, did he fuck that up? What happened? Um. Engineering Robotics. Did it fail? Why did he not finish that? Uh, Alright, let's try again then. I guess he screwed up. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Oh no, he's, there we go. He's finishing off now. I don't know why the hell it did that. Okay, so let's install this one, I guess, into this room here. Just to see if it is capable of um, helping things along here. So activate that. Um, what is it doing? Bot 8. Right, so look, let's trace Bot 8 for a while. Craft a Bot 8. Um, he's taking some silver. My god, we need to turn the speed down. These things move friggin' fast. Good god, they move fast. Um, okay, he's crafting more robots. Congratulations, we've gone full... Yeah, engineering robots. We've gone full Skynet here. So what skill has he got then, roughly? Um, robotic components requires how much skill? Um, skill crafting. I assume that's... Uh, sorry? Robotic components require crafting four. Okay, so he's got anywhere between four and twenty skill. That's, that's useless. Let's try, um... I mean, we could try the anti-logic one. I very much doubt he's got 20 crafting. Though. I imagine he's probably got 16 crafting because it's probably relative to um, the tier that you used to build them with, right? Um, can he can he do that now? Engineering Robotics. Um, now he's working on this one instead, which is making... Oh, so we can, he can't, by the looks of it, do this one. Um, or do the Advanced Robotics Matrix. I'll keep an eye on it. We'll see what you can do. But a couple of these definitely would help out a lot with the whole stone cutting aspect of things. What's everyone up to right now that we're not producing... Okay, so Granite Grimble. Building. Understandable. Dobson, cooking. Uh, we've got Euphrates, who's cutting stone blocks from chunk. That's fine. Fishing, uh, mining at demand. You know what? Fishing should come second to cutting stone blocks, I think. So anybody who's a fisherman, because we don't need any... Look, look at all the food we've got. We need no more food. We've got 3,000 lentils. We've got... Wait, is that puller not working then, I assume? Um, yeah, no, it's, it's evidently not working at all, because that's, that's within the ground zone. It's just not pulling it. All right, well, that's, that's fine. At least we've learned something today. Um... Yeah, no, we, we definitely don't need any more fish, I'd say. So let's find whoever is fishing. So that would be, um... Man, Alchemia, you are so useless. You can't even stone cut. You can refine, though, which is which is good. Um, load, cremate, haul, clean. Might be better just to have him hauling. So there are certain things the hauling bots can't manage. Jesus, you are goddamn awful, aren't you? All right, fine. Um, who, who are other fishermen? Then we've got Galileo, who's also completely useless. All right, then. Um, I guess stick to the hauling. Alright, so I've bumped up the crafting and the smithing skills for people now, the refining skills, so hopefully we should see a lot more of this happening right now, which, which people obviously stone cutting, making silicon, that type of thing. Yeah, this is working a lot better now, thank god. Alright, so hopefully, in no time at all, so this one was, was this magnetic cores came first or components first? Yeah, this one was uh, components first. 
I've I've already forgotten. Can you believe that? I just I just checked this one a second ago. My brain's already gone blank. Yeah. So so components first, um, and then we want to do that. Let's assume that they're going to use both of them. So we'll say do x times. This one I'm going to set them to do uh, like a hundred times, and then we'll set the other one down by how many did we need? We'll set them both to like a hundred or so times, so that we don't accidentally make too many. But so they can't make enough and I'll manually have them do some more in the future depending on how close we get. The last thing I want is an abundance. We'll do, we'll do 120 on each one. Um, which is slightly less than we need. But also it means, like I said, we're not wasting a shit ton of time and resources. Right, so go 120 in each one. That's only going to make 240. Like I said, I think we need, what, 300 or so? This is so expensive. This is how you do a little bit of balance in reward. It's going to take so much time. We need so many resources and so much power beforehand. The glitter tech stuff surprisingly balanced compared to, like, <coughs> Omnibots. Should I be concerned? Uh, so this one is completely trained in release as well, and it still can't do anything. Um, it's incapable of violence. Mind control creature. Yeah, okay, it is mind controlled, and we still can't attack with it. Melee attack cannot order characters. Okay, that's a little bit annoying. Um, so maybe it can only attack hostile creatures. You know what? I've completely forgotten about this goddamn thrombos. Um, I hope they weren't eaten. Otherwise, I'll probably cry here. Elk meat. Caribou meat. Uh, no, these look like Thrombo. We might be okay. Diplodocus, Boldermit, Lynx, Ibex, Venison. Maybe they weren't Thrombo. Wait, did we, uh, Thrombo jeans. What do Thrombo jeans look like? Muffalo? They're like blue, aren't they? Wolf? Insectoid? Thrombo? Th Thrombo? Thrombo? Oh god, what have I done? Wait. There we go. Hey. Yeah, okay, they did break them down. Jesus Christ, I was worried then for a second that I'd ruined everything. Alright, we're good. Um, so what we need to do then is... Oh shit. I was meant to clone the Thrombo. Thank you all for watching. Out to the insane top tier level patrons Big Dick Timmy, Zachary Harris, Harik, Lucas Holting, Sean Thornton, Law Russ, Hey Dog, Sidini, Paul, Necrofilin, Asuna Kirito, Facundo Vasquez, Croesus, I'm the Lizard King, Joshlin, Dean Tesla, Michael Mullen, Tyler Birch, Jacob Alexander Fenton, Powers Presley, Logan Thorne, Conspire T, Orcs Wolf, Average Gamer 419, Escape, Zazzy 7011, and Jackson Women for their support, the insane tier lovers on Patreon. Thank you for keeping this channel going. Thank you for keeping the series going. So much appreciated. And as well to Nathaniel Lindberg, Brandon Mintoniak, Euphrates, Quasar Fox, Jack Allen, Gabriel Van Dersel, Luan and Thomas, Nathan Flores, Yuan de Vries, Don Connie 217, Zet McDougal, Joseph Beard, Jordan Campbell, Harry McGowan, Will Wade, The Sage, Chris, Surfthal, The Swede, Asaro, Nick, Fraser Brennan, Kevin Saunders, Betamus Max, The Insane Pickle, Adam Person, Eagle Contact, Haji Dumar, and Noah Gallimore for your support on Patreon as well. Thank you. The new Patreon list will be available tomorrow, I think it is. Yeah, today's the fourth. So tomorrow they should have the final list. So if your name is not on here, or if it's on here and it definitely shouldn't be, then, uh, then I'll have that updated for tomorrow.